Alright guys, so I got a couple minutes to spare, so we're going to go ahead and write a simple XP system using a JSON file. However, just a disclaimer, I personally would not use this for like production because, um, well typically JSON files are really used for like storing, I guess, static data in my opinion. I mean obviously there are many different uses for it, uh, like you know you can use JSON files to store, you know, um, I mean I guess I shouldn't say static, but like most of the time JSON files really shouldn't be used to store like sensitive data for like your main app like if it's for like a small application then that's fine but for like larger production applications like you know web apps uh discord not not really Discord. Well, yeah discord bots uh maybe even others you definitely don't want to use a json file okay it's better to use a database because read and write operations are just much more optimized when you're using databases because it's designed to perform that way Okay, and it would be much faster. Well, yeah, it'd be much faster, and of course, um, it would just save you a bunch of headaches. Because what if you accidentally delete your JSON file, okay, and you're pretty much screwed. If you, however, if you have a database, that f that all that data is pretty much stored and organized uh, properly. So you don't have to worry so much about, you know, your entire database getting corrupted. Unless, like, you manually screw something up, like, you go out of your, and you go out of your way and manually screw something up. Okay, so enough talking. Let's go ahead and just create a simple bot.js file. Uh, all right, let's do this. Okay, and let's go ahead and do const. Uh, what is it? Const curly braces client. So we're just going to directly import the client class because I don't really need the rest of the library. If I need the rich embed, I can import that, but I'll do that later. So const client equals new clients. And we'll just go say and we'll go ahead and say, go ahead and say I can't even talk today. Uh, I'm kind of just speed running through this, so because um, I've never done this implementation before, I'm kind of just like speed running through it. But don't paste your token the way I'm doing it. Don't paste your token like that. Obviously, um, what you want to do is you want to store your token in like a JSON file or um, a .env file, and then reference it from there. Okay, I have tutorials on uh, on how to do that, so definitely check those out. So uh, let's just say bot has logged in. All right, so the whole idea of an XP system, a very, very simple XP system. Uh, for me, the way I usually implement them is I make sure that all the commands are ignored. So even if a user uses commands, it, they shouldn't receive XP. However, I don't know how that works with uh, the commando framework as well as you know if you're using Discord Pi. I'm not entirely sure about that. I think with Discord Pi, it's a whole different thing because when you... Um, use commands. I don't think that actually invokes the message event, I think. I'm not sure, entirely sure about that. But anyways, if we're using a regular, I mean, even if you're using a command handler, you can omit, uh, like, you can just check, okay, if the per did the person use a command? If they didn't, then that means they probably sent a regular message, so give them XP for it. So we're going to just do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if the author of the message is a bot, we're just going to return because we don't care about bots, uh, at least for now. And we're going to also say, uh, let's just define our prefix somewhere. So you can go ahead and define your prefix wherever you want. So I'm just going to do this up here. Also, let's say exclamation mark. And we're going to say if message uh, dot content starts with, and I'm going to actually negate this. Okay, so what we're saying is if the message does not start with an exclamation mark. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give them XP. Okay, so typically, like I said, uh, for smaller projects, smaller bots, you can get away with using a JSON file. If you're working on a bot with like a thousand members and like maybe even more than that, you definitely don't want to store everything in a JSON file. I highly would go against that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and create a JSON file first. So we're going to call this user uh, XP. You can call it whatever you want, uh, .json. Okay, so the structure of our JSON file is going to be very straightforward. It's going to look something like this. So we're going to go ahead and have, uh, let's see, I think what I'm going to do is we want to have, uh, let's see, we definitely want to make sure uh, we keep track of the user's guild, like, well, the guild member, uh, the guild, and I think that's all we really care about is just the guild and the member, because obviously, um, you know, your bot can be in different servers, and uh, that guild member can be in the same servers, can be like more than one server with the bot. All right, so you definitely want to make sure you're handling, you know, each guild member, like the same guild number in different guilds if they are in a different guild. So what I'm thinking is perhaps we can go ahead and do, um, hmm. 
I mean, ultimately, as long as we're able to just reference the user's ID, because the idea is basically what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reference their ID, and then we're just going to update some value. However, I guess the way we could do it is, let's say, for example, our structure could look something like this. Let's say this is their user ID, right? Every user has a unique ID. We can map it to an object, and then that object can have... Um, uh, that object can have properties such as the guild ID. So let's just say uh, guild ID 001, for example. And we don't really need any other information. Like we don't care about the guild name. So we're going to go ahead and just, you know, say, okay, this guild ID maps to a value. And that value is just going to be the amount of XP that they have, of course. And um, from there on, every other property is going to be uh it's just going to be the gill id and you can also we can also go a little bit more advanced to actually we can go ahead and say that gill id is going to map to another object or the value of that uh, gill id is going to be another object and that object can contain other properties so we can say a uh, user xp okay and that's going to be something like you know 89 like you know 89,000, whatever right we can just say user level obviously this needs to be in i think quotes so that's why it's giving me red lines Okay, so let's fix that. Then you say user level, and this obviously would have to be you know altered every single time you you know write to the uh, the file. So we can say this is video level twenty four, and of course, like I said, everything else you can have over here, rank, whatever you want to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and just. I think this is a good. Uh, I guess this is a good schema to follow. Okay, and then obviously every other property inside this zero zero one. This is the user ID. Remember, I'm gonna I'm just gonna call this user ID. And then we'll just call this guild ID 001 and then guild ID 0002. And then this is going to map to another object. And then we're going to have, you know, similar, we're going to have the same properties, of course, the different values. And we'll just say this is to a level, let's just say 100. And yeah, you can kind of pretty much get the idea because remember, a user can be in many different guilds, right? So you definitely want to make sure you're handling that case. I mean, of course, if you're just writing a bot for one server, then um, you can just ignore, you know, the guild ID. You don't have to worry so much about it, okay? But if you're writing it for multiple servers, which, you know, there, there might come a point, there might be a time where, let's say, you know, you have a couple friends that really like your bot, right? They're on your server, they really like your bot. Um, and you're like, hey, you know what? Let me actually bring my bot to your server. However, it's not going to work because you have everything hard-coded or your everything that works on your server only works for your server and doesn't work for anything else okay okay so then we can have obviously another thing so we'll just say user id 0002 and then this user id can be in different guilds so like there'll be in guild you know id 003 and this guild id 004 and those guilds can have the same object so user xp and then we can go ahead and just define that and then you know like you guys get the idea i think i don't think i need to go any further okay but the idea is pretty much what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and read this JSON file. So I don't think I'm actually going to require it because I think when you require it and then you update it, it doesn't actually update the cache. So because basically, let's say, for example, I do user XP equals require. Uh, I might be wrong. I might be entirely wrong, but I'm willing to try that right now. OK, and hopefully you guys don't mind. So I'll just go ahead and just log user XP real quick. So I have my bots. Do I have my bot? Uh, I can just run it real quick. We have it logged in. So let me go ahead and let's just do nodemon bot.js or our bots. Okay, so we have, uh, let's see, we have an error somewhere. Where do we have an error? Um, position 453, I don't know where that is. 16, it's definitely not here. I don't recall having, I don't think this is all valid JSON, yeah. Oh, okay, I don't know why that, uh, <laughs> that was really weird. Okay, anyways, uh, so I'm gonna go into my test server and let's just go ahead and send a message. So let's just do that. And you can see, yes, we have what we required from the above. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's see. Uh, okay, so basically the idea is what we want to do is we want to go ahead and write to this JSON file. Okay, now if you write to this JSON file, um, you can't just do this. So you can't just do user XP uh, and you can't just do, uh, what is this? Let's just say guild, let's just say user, uh, I don't know, user ID 0, user ID 0, 0, 0, 
three because we can dynamically add properties to objects because this is a this is a JSON object. So I can do this is equal to this object which has you know guild ID zero 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 five and then that's gonna map to another object. We we'll just say user XP is gonna be forty five and then user level is gonna be one. Okay, so if I do that and obviously if I log it to the console. It's going to update the user XP object. So let's just take a look at that. Uh, let's go ahead and say da -da -da. So you're going to see that this is the uh, JSON object before we added that, that, that other property. And you can see this is after. The problem with this is let's say if I save, you're going to see that if I go ahead and, and send the message again, uh, that thing is pretty much cleared. Okay. And you can't just do something like user XP equals that. It's not going to update it. We haven't actually uh, appended that new content to the file. So that's what we're going to need to do. Okay. So what I'm actually going to do is instead of just requiring this JSON file, because remember this JSON file is going to be different every single time after every single time we update the JSON file, it's going to be different. So, and I'll explain what I mean by then just a sec, but in order for us to actually, uh, play around with the, well, not play around, but in order for us to actually read and write or do anything with our file system, we're going to need the FS module. Okay. So we're going to do const FS equals require FS. Now I'm actually going to use the promises version of FS. Now, if you don't know what FS is, it's basically stands for file system. It's an API that's part of Node.js, So you don't have to do any extra installation. It is, if you have Node.js, it's, it's part of it. Okay. It's a core uh, API that's part of Node.js. And we're going to use the promise uh, library, the promise version of FS, because I don't want to deal with, you know, callback hell. Um, so, so, so we're going to do a lot of uh, async await because promises basically is the promise version of FS. And instead of using promises, I want to use async await just to make things look a little bit more cleaner. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to say, okay, so if it does not start with exclamation mark, I'm going to go ahead and say let, um, let's just say let uh, XP let's just say let xp file equal fs.read file. And we're going to go ahead and say uh, user xp.json. And I think the encoding is going to be UTF-8, of course. And this is, I think automatically it should parse as a JSON or it might not. So we're going to have to check that real quick. Okay. And if, so right now I'm actually on version 10.16.3, which is why I'm getting this warning. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not, I actually had to downgrade my version because I was working on a music bot and it was just giving me a lot of issues. But if you're on version 12, it should be fine. Oh, we need to also await this because we're using async await. Okay. So let's do it again. Okay. So now, yes, I think this automatically does. No, th no, it didn't parse it to Jason. Okay. Cause right now, if I try to do, let's say if I try to do console.log, XP file and let's just say because so you can see right now even when I use the uh, the dot operator you can see that we get a bunch of methods on for the string right so if I try to reference let's say if I try to reference user ID like that property inside the JSON file already right I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get an error and just want to show you that real quick so you're gonna get an error it's, well you're not gonna get an error but it's gonna say undefined okay so because right now this is not actually JSON. When we read the file, we, we need to uh, convert it because basically it reads it as a string and we need to uh, convert it to JSON. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say let JSON. I guess we can say XP. I don't know. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it XP object. We're gonna say JSON.parse. We're going to pass in the string. Okay. And remember this string, it has to be valid JSON. If it's not, uh, you're going to get an error. Okay. So let's just do console.log xp object and you're going to go and see it's going to look a lot bit different it's not going to look like a string it's going to look formatted like that it looks you, know, you can see the color it's highlighted color highlighted all that kind of stuff color coded okay cool now if i go ahead let's just say if i do like that space i should probably get an error because uh no wait let me go ahead and add like uh let me just mess that file up real quick let's just do a simple yeah let's do that so the file is still going to read just fine but when we parse it it's going to throw an error you're going to see yep uh, unexpected token, common JSON position 454. Okay, so let's just get rid of that. All right, so now that we have the JSON object, what do we need to do next? So what we need to do next is we're going to go ahead and check the JSON object because right now we have this object. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and say if uh, XP object has own property, we're going to call that function to check if it has the property, the user ID property. Okay. Remember, so basically every single, uh, property in here in the first layer is going to be the user ID. So we're going to pass in our user ID. So we're going to say, uh, message dot author dot ID. 
okay so if it doesn't um we're gonna have to add it okay so we're gonna say if message i'm sorry if xp object has own property message author id and i actually need to uh convert this to a string i think because the id is actually um hold on the id is actually a long int or it's an integer and i want to convert it to a string so i think if we just do two string that should work just fine um not right now let me see it actually says string actually no wait what am i talking about i could have sworn i think this yeah i think the snowflake itself is actually a string okay yeah i don't know what i'm talking about for now Okay, no, no, we're, we're good, we're good. Okay, so if object, okay, so if it has that property, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say let user XP, uh, what do we want to call this? Let user XP object equal XP object. We're going to, we're going to reference it like this using the uh, square bracket operator, or we're going to reference it using square brackets. Okay. Oh, wait, it's message authored ID. I'm sorry. Okay, and then uh, we now have the user's, uh, the user, the value of the user. Okay, and that value of the user ID is the object, and the object contains all of the guilds that the user's in, or as long as they, you know, have XP in it. And each for each guild uh, property, it's going to map to an object that contains user XP and user level. Okay, so now what we're, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check if user XP object has own property, and we're going to check if that, if that uh, user, uh, we're going to check if this user XP object, right? So now we're in this layer over here, right? We're in this layer. We're going to check if that user ID object over here has the guild ID, okay? So if it doesn't have the guild ID, then we can assume that they've probably never sent a message. Um, so if they send a message for the first time, we're going to give them a little bit of XP. So let's go ahead and say message the guild ID. And yes, that should be a string. If it isn't, then we're going to have to convert it, but I'm pretty sure it's a string though. Okay, so if it does have it, um, then all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. So if this user XP object has the correct guild ID, then we can assume that's going to have these properties. And that's going to be up to us to make sure that we add these properties in the first time that they join or the first time that they get XP. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and say, uh, let's say let's guild, um, guild, I guess, uh, what do I want to call this? Guild XP object. These aren't really great variable names. I just can't really think too much about it right now. And we're going to go ahead and say message guild ID. So this is going to get the, this is going to get the, uh, the object. This is going to get this object inside over here. Okay. So basically right now we're referencing the user, the user ID, the value of user ID is an object, right? So we have that object over here. And what I'm doing is I want to reference either one of these guilds, whichever guild that they're sending a message in or whichever guild that they're supposed to get XP in. I'm trying to see if, if that guild ID is inside, is a property of the object over here. And if it is, then we're just going to update the user XP. So we're going to go ahead and just say, um, well, here we're going to go ahead and generate a random a number. So we're just going to go ahead and say a uh, function generate experience points, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. Return math dot round, or we'll just say math dot random. And we'll, I guess we can do from zero to 250 should be fine. Of course, obviously I could have done it inside here, but you know, I could just call this function and just call every single time. So let's just say let uh, new XP equals this. We're gonna call generate experience points. So that's gonna give us a random number every single time we invoke that function. And we're, we wanna basically take, okay, so right now, we're saying, okay, if it has the guild ID, that means that they have XP. So we want to get their current XP and then add the new XP, like add the, uh, the up, we're going to basically have to update their XP. Okay. So we're not overwriting anything. We're not overwriting their XP. We're just updating it. So to get their XP, we're going to say, let uh, current XP equals guild XP object. Cause we're referencing the user XP property on the, uh, on the object that is mapped by the guild ID. So we're gonna say uh, guild XP object user XP, or it's in caps, we'll leave it like that. So that's gonna get us whatever value there is. Um, okay, so we have that. So we're just gonna say let's updated XP, current XP plus new XP. All right, and now uh, this part, of, of course, this part is optional here. What you'd have to do is you'd have to check, um, you'd have to check 
to see if they should level up or not. Now this can get really ugly. It's gonna be basically a long, depending on how many levels you have on your server, it can get really ugly. So I would highly recommend you put, you wrap it inside like a different file to check, you know, which, uh, like how much XP they should, or how what level they should be. So you can honestly write a function. You can say function term uh, update level. And then that would pretty much uh, pass in the XP. So just say EXP. And you'd have to write a simple, you know, long, if else case so for example let's just say um uh let's see experience points between uh zero and uh 1000 is going to be level one for example so let's just say if exp is is greater than or equal to zero and exp is less than or equal to a thousand we're going to say uh return one okay so that's going to be level one else if experience is greater than a thousand so it's good it's not greater than or equal to now it's greater than a thousand or actually i guess we could say less than a thousand again it doesn't really matter whichever one you want to do just remember that the reason why over here i'm doing greater than a thousand is because um we can't check if it's greater than or equal to um because one level 1000 once they reach uh, over one level 1000 they're going to be level two okay so if they're i'm sorry if they have 1000 experience points they're still going to be level one but once they go over 1,000 experience points, they're going to be the next level. So we're going to go say if experience is greater than 1,000, and then experience is greater or less than or equal to, let's just say 2,000. So that's going to be uh, 2. And of course, I can just, you know, I can just honestly just do this. Just look nice. And like, like I said, like, of course, these values are really up to you on how you want to... Uh, like, you know, set up your levels and stuff. It doesn't really matter how. It's just really up to you, of course. You have full uh, control of, your, you know, your uh, XP function. Like, you know, how much XP you should get. You have full control of, um, you know, how much how much XP should be, you know, whatever level. Again, it's all up to you. Okay, obviously, you can write a more dynamic. And we'll just do else return six, I guess. That's going to be the max level. Yeah, you can basically write like maybe a dynamic function that can determine these kind of things, but we're not going to get into that. I'm just trying to show you uh, a basic implementation. And once you figure, maybe you can take this idea and extend it to yourself. Okay, but the whole point is just to focus on the uh, the foundation first. Once you have the foundation, you can start worrying about the more uh, the more complicated things. Okay, so let updated XP. So this is the updated XP. So every single time we update their XP, we're going to have to call this update level function. So we'll just say uh, let level. Or let's just say, yeah, let's just say let level, okay? So this function is pretty much going to determine what level uh, their user is going to be. And we're going to say uh, updated, uh, let's just see, um, updated XPS. Okay. And this is obviously going to return either a value between 1 to 6. Again, of course, depending on um, whatever, how much XP they have, okay? And if you want to send a message to the user, uh, if they've leveled up, you can, what you can do is you can go ahead and say let uh, preview let uh, current level equals, and you want to reference that current level property. Uh, that's in that's the uh, that's the that's inside the object of the value of the guild ID. Okay, um, so we're gonna go ahead and say uh, let's see guild xp object user level. Okay, and of course. All of this is assuming that you have these values inside uh, the object over here. Okay, cool. All right, so and then you can go ahead and say if uh, current level is not equal to level, okay? Because obviously if their current level is, let's just say three, and then you check the level to see if they should update, right? So for example, let's say uh, their current level is three, and uh, their XP went from like, let's say 2,900 to 3,100. 3, when you call update level with the new XP, it's gonna return four. So if you say, if current level is not equal to level, let's just say message.channel.send. And we'll do, uh, let's see. If you wanna mention the member directly, we can just do template syntax and use string interpolation and just pass the, well, not member, it's message.member. You can just pass in message.member. Uh, has leveled up Okay, and let me just close this now because we don't really need any more. Okay, cool. And that's gonna say they leveled up. Otherwise um, Okay, we're not done yet. Okay, so all we've done so far was we've updated their values and we stored it inside a variable or we got their current values and we 
appended it, and then we uh, we haven't actually uh, stored it to the file yet. Okay, we haven't updated the file, and that's what we're gonna have to do. So what we're gonna do is let's see. Um, okay, uh, okay, what we're gonna do? Let me actually get this file back. Okay. All right, so let's see. So right now we have the we have a lot of variables, which is really freaking ugly. So what we need to do is we just need to update the user XP and the user level. So we have the XP file. Well, we have the XP object parsed right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and say XP object. So we're, we're going to update this JSON, this JSON object. We're going to go ahead and say, okay, so since we're inside this uh, this uh, this block, we can go ahead and just directly reference message.author.id. Okay, so we're referencing the user ID right over here. So we're going to get their object, okay, the value of their user ID, which is this object over here. And then we can directly access, um, we can directly access the guild by doing message.guild.id. Now notice how you're probably wondering, like, why can I not access it directly from guild XP object over here, right? Because why would I, why am I doing it this way? Because the guild XP object only has that inner object. We don't. We need to get the the global object, not the global, but like the uh, overall, like the entire JSON object. Okay. So we're gonna update that JSON object, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and say, let's see. So we have the guild, uh, the guild ID, the guild ID is a value, which is this object. And we're going to reference user XP. So we're going to go ahead and say user XP. That's caps. And we're going to go ahead and set that equal to updated XP, which is the updated XP. And we're going to do the same thing, but with um, with uh, user level. And obviously, that's going to be the same if their level didn't change. Uh, hold on. And we're going to say, uh, what is it? Current level. Okay. And that's it. That's going to pretty much update it for the user XP object. Okay. So the user XP object is remember, that's the entire parsed uh, JSON file. Okay. So now that we've updated the entire uh, now that we've updated the entire uh, JSON object, we're going to go ahead, I'm just going to console the logins, I have been coding the entire thing, but I haven't actually shown you guys much yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just a hard code my values in there. So let's just go ahead and do this. So that's my user ID. Um, we're going to go ahead and paste our guild ID. We don't really care about the guild name. Okay, the stuff doesn't really matter. Okay, we're just going to say one or that's this should be an integer user level. Uh, what was it? One? Okay, that's fine. Okay, cool. So this should work, hopefully. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, then I'm pretty much screwed. That's the law. Okay, so yeah, it worked perfectly. Okay, you can see right now that uh, we have this over here. We have my ID, we have my guild ID, user XP, level one. If I change it, obviously it's gonna, so notice how it's a different number. It's actually less than before. That's because um, we're basically reading this file over and over again. So it's pretty much the same thing all the time because we have, again, we haven't written, we haven't overwritten the file yet. Okay. But we're going to do that right now. So now that we've updated the JSON, the parsed JSON uh, file, like the JSON object of the file, we're going to go ahead and rewrite. We're well, not rewrite. We're going to overwrite the entire file with our, uh, with our updated JSON object. Okay. Cause remember this JSON object represents the entire thing. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and say, uh, we're just gonna say await fs dot. Let's see. I think write file. So we're pretty much overwriting the entire file. So that's user xp dot json, and we're gonna say the data. So we need to actually stringify this because if you actually try to pass in xp object in the json in the uh, user xp dot json, it's gonna look something like object object. Okay. So you want to make sure that you stringify it. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's just say json.stringify xp object and encoding. Uh, you can just do utf8, but ultimately I think by default it's utf8. And I'm gonna go ahead and catch the error in case um, any error happens. And of course there can be, there's always gonna be a lot of errors when it comes to uh, the only file system. So you also wanna make sure you're catching those errors. Um, and yeah, that should pretty much do the trick. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. And let's go ahead and just type some messages. And you're going to go ahead and see everything is good. 
But you can see now that this pretty much looks pretty, uh, looks pretty shit if you look at it. Um, actually, I think there's actually a way to preserve white space when you write to files. So let me actually see fs preserve white space white file because I remember I've had I've pretty much dealt with them like before. Um, uh, I just don't remember what it is that I did, but I do remember there was a parameter that you can pass in to preserve white space fs write file preserve white space. I don't remember exactly how it is, but I do remember uh, you can do it. Just trying to find it. Oh. Stack overhaul, but I can't. I can't find it right now. But anyways, but yeah, I mean, like I said, this pretty much works. It's perfectly fine right now, but we haven't. Okay, so pretty much obviously right now, let's go ahead and just do a couple more things. Um, let's just go ahead and say, da -da -da, da -da 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 -da, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, let's just look at our level. We have user XP 250, so uh, that's very little. Let me just go ahead and just keep spamming. You can see 307. Why am I getting so little? I'm pretty sure time is 250 that should be between 0 and 250 i'm not sure i might just be unlucky 361 i don't even know let me actually see how much i'm actually getting uh once log and exp because that should definitely be a lot more in my opinion 88 okay and we are definitely updating it so let's just see 449 449 plus 67 yeah, that's, yeah, okay, 67. Wait, 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 yeah, yeah, that's fine, yeah. 789, okay, so we're about to level up soon, and I'm just trying to show you guys that once we uh, reach that, I'm just trying to show you guys the uh, the message it's going to send once we level up. Should send the message anytime soon, 966, so hopefully the next one should work. Uh, there we go, Sty is leveled up, and you can see in the JSON file, uh, why did that not update user level? That is actually strange. It should okay, yeah. Um, hold on. Did I actually update user level? So user one current level. Oh, uh, I set it to okay. I, I messed that part up. It should be level. Yeah, I should I should have called this new level actually. New level is update level, and if current level is not equal to new level, then okay, there we go. And we're gonna say okay, there we go. So. So notice how now it's not going to send me a message every single time because we're comparing the correct value. And you can see in the JSON file, it's two. Okay. Um, okay, that's pretty much it for there. We're still not done yet. We still need to handle the case when the user uh, first sends a message. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that because when they first send the message, they're obviously not going to be inside the, uh, the JSON file. Okay. So we want to make sure that we are uh, checking for that. And then if they're not in the JSON file, all we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and uh, add them to it. And that should be pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just trying to find, hold on, I'm, trying to, I'm actually checking something real quick on preserving the white space. Because I know, okay, I think I figured, I, I think I found it. Okay, so if you want to preserve the white space, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. What you're going to do is inside stringify, you can pass in two parameters, null and four. I think null is, it says null is the replacer and spaces adds indentation. Okay, there we go. Because, yeah, I had to look at my other uh, my other code just now just to figure that out. Because I don't, I remember, I, I, remember I, uh, I, I remember I had that problem before, but I don't remember how I did it. But you've seen now, D, we're going to get the uh, nice format again. Okay, and that's pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this because we don't need this anymore. Again, we have all this. Stuff. I mean, like I said, if you want to store more information, you can. So what you could do is, let's say if you want to store the username uh, over here in the user ID, you can just add another property. Say like, you know, um, username, for example, style, and then, you know, uh, comma, and then the guild. Um, and obviously, oh, actually, um, yeah, you, you can be creative. You can be creative. Just, just, you know, for now, we're not going to worry so much about that because we don't really care so much about the username. Okay. Okay, so now let's go into the go into this else case, and let's go ahead and say if okay, so if XP object has own property, so if this JSON file does not have the author ID, we're gonna have to add it to the JSON file. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna go ahead and read the file. So let's go ahead and do, let's just copy this again. Okay, so we're gonna read the file. Okay, and then we're going to parse the file right over here, json.parse, which takes in the string, representation of the json, uh, and then we're gonna parse it to an actual json object. And so, uh, right over here, since we're in this else case, we know that they're not in the JSON file. Actually, I don't need to reread it again. What am I doing? What I need to do is I need to say XP object um, message the author ID. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to say that is going to be an object. Okay. So it's going to be this object right over here. And then we're going to go ahead and say, uh, let's see, message the guild ID. Or I need to do this. Let's just say let guild ID equals message dot guild dot ID. And we're going to go and say, um, let's see, I need to add that guild ID as a property because if I just do guild ID, that's going to be, that's going to think that's the key and that's not what I want. So I think what I'll do is I think, I'll, yeah, I think, I think I know what I'm going to do. We're going to say XP object. Okay. Uh, message author ID is going to be equal to this empty object. Then we're going to go and say XP object uh, message the author ID at guild ID is going to be equal to another object. And that object is going to have user XP. Okay. And that's going to be the number. So you're going to go ahead and generate, um, generate experience points. And just do that like that. And then um, user level is just going to be one by default. I mean, I think that's given because once they send, I mean, again, it's it's all up to you because right now what we have over here is um, if experience is greater than or equal to zero and experience is less than 100, then, um, you know, they're going to be given level one. OK, and I think in the first case, since this number generates between, I think, zero to 249, I think I'm not entirely sure we round it. So that's going to actually round to the nearest. Uh, so I'm not sure entirely. But anyways, we can just give them user level one by default. Okay, and let me just go ahead and I'm gonna remove this entire thing and that should work just fine. So let's go, let's just say D and let's just go and see what happened. Uh, nothing happened. Uh, we might have gotten an error. Or actually, no, nothing really happened yet. Okay, so I'm in my console. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna send hello. Did anything happen? Um, oh, I didn't save. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I didn't save the, uh, <laughs> I didn't save the, uh, I didn't overwrite the file. So let's just log it real quick just to see if, oh, what it looks like. Okay, awesome. So we can see we have the string representation of our IDs, which is good. That's what we want. Okay. Uh, we have the guild ID. I mean, not the, the user ID, which maps to an object. That object uh, has a property. And that property is the guild ID and that guild ID maps to another object. And that object has two properties, user XP and user level. This is great. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to overwrite the file again. So the same thing that we did up here. So we're going to go ahead and do that again. So we're going to go ahead and say await fs.write file user XP dot JSON, uh, JSON dot stringify. And then you're going to pass in XP object null and then four for indentation. And then UTF-8 by default it's UTF-8. So you don't have to worry so much about it. And then, catch the error. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's just say hello. Okay. Did that work? Yes. Perfect. And if I go ahead and say hello again, it's going to, I did that. Oh, that, that restarted actually. Wait a minute. Oh, that's actually kind of bad. I mean, we're using Nodemon, so it's okay. Okay. So the problem right now is, okay, this is only a development issue, but it's, it, it's not going to entirely break the entire bot because right now since I'm using Nodemon and since this file is being overwritten, every time you save Nodemon will auto restart the bot. However, this thing is being rewritten anyways. So by the time the bot restarts, we're going to have the correct XP. But obviously if I use just node bot.js, it's not going to be a huge deal. So let's just say da da da, and you're going to see 295, 354, 3533, 686, 722, blah, blah, blah. Sty is leveled up and we're now level two. And I think that's really all there is to it with this uh, XP system. So let me go ahead and I'm going to go on my other accounts and just try this out just to be 100% sure because you always want to make sure you're testing your code uh, for bugs and stuff. So I'm just going to do that real quick. So let's see. Can I go over to... First of all, let me give my other other accounts 
give my other account access to the rest of the channels. Okay, so we have access to the rest of the channels. So let's go ahead and say one, two, three, four, five. And you can see our user, or my other account is now in our uh, JSON file. And you can see they have, uh, wow, they got a lot of XP already. Okay, well, they leveled up already, which is good, and they're level two. And likewise, any other user that would um, join this, uh, that would join the guild and then that would start uh, typing and you know start messaging they're going to receive xp if i go into a different guild i think my other my other server has this account as well i mean has this bot so let's just go and say uh test you're going to see um hold on, that should have done something right there should have uh huh let me see oh you know what I, you know what i forgot to do because over here i'm checking if the guild ID is inside the user XP object, and I didn't actually handle that case. So I gotta go ahead and do that real quick. Completely forgot about that, wow. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So let's just say if user XP dot has on property, because you can see right now, what I just did was I went on my other server where my other bot is, right? And I said test, and that should have added um, my other guild ID to the inner object of our user ID right over here. However, it didn't because we didn't write the, the case for it, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So right over here, uh, you're gonna go ahead and see, okay, so if, so right now let's go through it again. So if XP object has own property. So if we have the author ID, then that means uh, that's good, right? We're going to add the author to our JSON file, their author ID to the JSON file. We're going to give them the current guild that they messaged in, okay? And then we're gonna give them the XP and the level and that works just fine, okay? But then over here, we're checking if the property is inside the user ID. Okay, but if it's not though, we entirely ignore everything else. Okay, so basically this would only work if, uh, this will only work in the first guild that the user message, the user sent the message in or the user started receiving XP in. Okay, so any other guild, it would not work. So we need to fix that. So I think it's just gonna be the same thing anyways. So if they're not in there, we're gonna go ahead and say, um, user XP object, uh, and then we're gonna say message.guild.id. So we're gonna add that uh, property, and that's gonna be set to, um, <clears throat> that's gonna be set to, uh, wait, 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 no, wait, give me one sec. Uh, no, it's not gonna be guild ID, it's gonna be message.author.id, I apologize. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and say, or oh, wait, wait a second, no. I'm messing up. Okay, it's not it's not user XP object. It's XP object because we need to modify the uh, the entire JSON object representation of the file. So we're gonna reference the author's ID, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, say. So we had the author author ID. We're gonna go ahead and say message .guild ID, and this is going to equal um, an object. Yes, that's gonna add the other key to the object, and we're gonna go and say user XP xp uh, that's going to be generate experience points and then user level since they're in a new guild we're just going to give them level one all right so that should work let's try that again or we gotta do node node bot.js so let's just do test you're gonna see that uh wait a minute why did that not work huh um huh, that's actually kind of, oh Oh my God, I keep forgetting. We need to rewrite the file second time. All right, cool. So let's do it again. Let me just delete these messages. Okay, so test. I should have rewritten it. Mm, let me see. I'm gonna use note one real quick. Okay, so our bot is in the server. Yes, that's good. Okay, and this else case, so if XP object has own property, so we do have our author ID, that's correct. And then we're gonna check if they have the guild ID. Okay, so if it doesn't, it should go into this case over here. Let's just say test. Why is that not logging? Hold on. Test autobot, okay, that's the correct bot. Uh, and the bot can see messages over here. 
But um oh wait. If message.content does not start with exclamation mark, okay. It should be correct. So if if XP object has own property message the author ID. It does, right? It's right over here. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, so if it does, let's just say yes. For, let's just debug this a little bit. Test. Okay, yes. So we did generate the XP and that's, so apparently it's doing inside here. Apparently, okay, so a lot of user XP object. So if user XP object has own property, guild.id, which it doesn't though, that's the problem. Hold on, message.guild.id. Guild is in JSON file, test. Okay, that's actually wrong. That should not, should not work. If user XP object has own property, message.guild.id. Well, no, that's definitely not correct. If I look at my guild ID, the guild ID of this is five eight. This is five three. So why is that saying, why is that saying true though? That doesn't make any sense. User XP object is equal to this over here, right? That's this. Okay. Um. Oh boy. Oh boy. User XP object is this right over here. Has own property message dot guild dot id. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Message guild dot id. I never. I didn't expect to actually get this. Uh, get this weird error. But okay, so we can see that this is the guild id. Wait, so it, it is in there. Or am I just, am I, not, am I missing something? So it's in there, but why is that not? Oh, what the hell? Wait a minute, what the hell is going on? Oh my God, wow, I can't believe, wow. Okay, so apparently it just wasn't updating for some reason because I was so used to it just updating, but for some reason this was not updating. Uh, which is very strange why it wasn't. No wonder why, yeah. Like, I knew this was correct. Like, I knew this was correct. I just don't understand. I didn't understand why it was, uh... Well, yeah, okay, it was just a... It was just my my uh, editor wasn't... My editor didn't refresh when the uh, file got updated, but it's fine, okay? But you can see that... Uh, wait, now... Okay, yeah, you can see right over here that uh, someone actually just sent another message in off-topic. And you can see that their ID is over here and they have some XP over here. And you can see this is my other guild, my test server. And you can see, I mean, I'm sorry, that's my other that's my other account. And this is there in the other test server, okay. But this is my account, my main account. And I'm in uh, the test server as well as my uh, current server, okay. So my current server now has user, I have a user XP in, my, my, in both my servers. So if I do uh, test one, two, three, test, Again, this is gonna update for, I think, uh, this one over here and test again, 84, test, uh, hold on. I need to reopen this, 884, and then test, 985, and then test, and that should say style has leveled up, just like that. All right, so cool, uh, yeah, so hopefully, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any other potential bugs so far, I think, pretty sure we covered uh, pretty much everything, uh, so anything, I think, yeah, I think that should be it for now. I don't think there's anything else that I need to uh, go over because the flow of execution seems pretty straightforward. Um, and I don't really think that there's anything else that uh, could go wrong. Uh, the only thing I want to mention is obviously, um, you know, you want to be careful with your JSON file because, you know, if you accidentally write something to it that's invalid, like an invalid character, it's going to mess up your JSON file and you're going to have problems parsing it. Especially if, a, if you have a really like large file, um, it could be very hard to like detect like, you know, which, you know, character. I mean, I mean, the, uh, the engine will actually uh, figure that out for you. It'll tell you which position and what line it is in, what the error is in, but uh, yeah. 
But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this uh, first tutorial. Um, I love how over here, I said starts with, uh, it should be prefix because I defined it up there and I never referenced that variable. Okay. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully it made sense. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I didn't really expect it to take this long because I thought it would take like maybe like 30 minutes or so, but I ended up taking like 50, but I guess it's fine. So yeah, pretty much if you have any questions about this, uh, just, you know, leave a comment down below. Definitely check out my Discord server and, you know, just join. You know, if you have any questions, any programming help, you know, just make sure you ask questions on the server. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys in my next video. Peace.